Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggle stories and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. We are locally underwritten by the Bank of Sun Prairie. My name is James Kateman, entrepreneur, author, speaker, and helpful coach to small business owners across the country. And today we're excited to learn from Kayla Storlid, the founder, owner, let's call it, of Nature <laughs> Nanny. So Kayla, how are you doing today? I'm good, how are you doing today? I'm doing awesome and I'm excited because you've been on the show two other times before. Yes. Right, Diff different businesses each. Yes. Uh, cleaning business you had for, I don't know, like 500 years. Yeah, feels something, like it. <laughs> something like that. And uh, the other one, whatever, <laughs> life goes on. <laughs> yeah. Now you got Nature Nanny. Nature Nanny, I gotta say, sounds like the most fun between the three. Yeah. So how about you tell us what is Nature Nanny? Let's start there. Okay, so Nature Nanny is a service that helps get children, adults, and organizations into nature, right. either by doing guided hikes or um, guided forest therapy walks. Um, so parents can schedule just online and either schedule for one or two children or up to four for okay. um, increments of time, one hour, an hour and a half, two hours, or adults can also go on private guided hikes or hikes with their friends. And then organizations can do team building. And um, there's two options. One is just a guided hike where we're just kind of walking and talking and enjoying nature. and. Um, the other option is a guided forest therapy walk, which is where you open your senses. You focus on things like um, you do invitations. So the group will come together, we'll pick invitations, and an invitation might be look and see what's moving. Oh, in and, the forest. Exactly. Okay. So then we'd break away and go off on your own <coughs> and just really focus on what's moving. If I were to do that with children, I would make it a lot more fun. Like look for what's moving and then try to move your body in that way because kids oh, you know they, right. they're kind of more wiggly right um and it's about opening the senses so you would focus on sight taste sound touch and then kind of what of your like heart sense like what is your heart sensing All right. um and it's meant to really bring you into the present moment but the whole goal of Nature Nanny is just to reconnect people of all ages with nature to experience the many health benefits because um, research has shown that spending time in nature can reduce stress, it improves sleep, it reduces anxiety, it improves confidence, and the list of health benefits just go on and on. All right. That sounds super cool. So the is the idea that people come to you kind of once in a while or that they come to you routinely once a week or once a month i don't know it's what, it's really the goal yeah well, it's really up to whatever the person's needs are um so uh, for instance if it's a busy parent who just like really wants to get their kids off the screen and maybe needs to grab lunch with a girlfriend or get some grocery shopping done or do some errands and they can schedule as much as they want. So right. if they wanted to get their kid out every day for an hour just to have a little, uh, you know, parent time to themselves, sure. they could do that or they could schedule, you know, once a year. All right. Hence the nanny portion there. Right. Where you're, you're essentially babysitting the kids, I guess. Yeah. Just on a hike. Yeah. Interesting. Tell me, where did the inspiration for this come from? So after I sold my cleaning business, I tried a couple different things just because I'd done the same work for 20 years, you know, and I'd wow. always like kind of <laughs> dreamed about trying different stuff and seeing what I really liked. And so I um, stumbled on caregiving a friend I went to kindergarten with. I bumped into him and his mom needed some help with organizing. And I was like, well, I can do that. No problem. Yeah. And so I helped her with a lot of organizing and then she was progressing with dementia. Oh. Um, so she needed care as well. So I was going there five to six times a week for a couple hours a day, just preparing food, helping her with her medication, paying her bills, going on walks with her and, and such. And then um, when I owned the card beanie business, one of the people that I knew needed childcare for his kiddos. All right. And I was like, I love kids, so hey, why not? So that kind of started the nannying thing. I was doing the caregiving for a senior and then I started watching two boys 
Um, they were nine and 12 at the time. Um, and, you know, I just noticed this profound shift. We made a goal of trying to get out hiking every day. They lived really close to Pheasant Branch in oh, Middleton. Nice. Yeah, right. so beautiful. And when we went into nature, I just, all three of us, there was just such a profound shift in our nature of just, you know, feeling more relaxed, more calm, more happy, mm -hmm. more joyful that I was like, there's something really onto this. So while I was nannying those two boys, I had checked out a book at the library at one of our visits to the library and it was called Forest Bathing. Forest Bathing? Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. <clears throat> so that's what um, forest therapy kind of started. So in 1980s in Japan, um, their population started getting very ill and they didn't know why. So the government wanted to do a bunch of research to find out like what's happening, why are people getting sick? And they had just moved from being a really rural community, um, you know, working more outside and in the fields and agriculture to the tech boom. So now they were all moving to big cities and mm. they were on screens and they were stuck inside all day. So the government decided to fund some research on what would happen if people started spending, you know, hours at a time in nature. Wow. And they found astonishing, like, scientific um, evidence that spending time in nature is so good for you. And the one fact that is just incredible is um, our, the trees have their own immune system. Okay. And they give off these chemicals called photocyanide. I never can say it right. It's like photocyanides or something like that. Anyways, it's this chemical and it's their immune system. So if, let's say, a predator is coming, they kind of emit this chemical to tell the other trees and such that it's coming and to protect themselves. And when we spend time in nature, all the plants actually give it off, but the trees are just the largest. We breathe them in. And oh. when we breathe them in, we have a cell in our body called the natural killer cell or the NK cell. And they found that if you spent like four hours in the forest, that natural killer cell, which attacks cancer and tumors and all kinds of nasty stuff in your body, is elevated for up to 30 days. Holy cow. Yeah. So go camping once a month. Go all the time. <laughs> Just live in the backyard. <laughs> all right. Interesting. Yeah. So the Japanese government does this research and they find this out. Mm -hmm. And then they say, hey, everybody, we're just kidding about the technology thing. <laughs> everybody move back out in the country. <laughs> no, they, they just started. The, the culture shifted to more that in their free time, they were spending time in nature. All right. And, and they also have like a tradition of flower arrangements. So that's another part of it. But there's a lot of people that spend time hiking and in the forest. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right. Who knew? Yeah. Who knew? So this is, I mean, 80s is not that long ago, right? right? I mean, we were alive in the 80s, so it can't be that long ago. No. And but and there's so few people that actually know about it. Yeah. You know, like I always loved nature since I was a kid. Like in my free time, I always hiked. That's just what I did. I, I But I always... Then I, once I read the research, I started being really aware of how different I felt before and after. Um, like we were talking about before the show, I have a pinched nerve. Yeah. And it just throws my nervous system, every system out of whack. And so I was noticing that if I went and stuck my feet in really cold water, mm -hmm. if I could find like a river or a creek or a spring, um, the pain would go away. And it would stay oh. away for a couple hours. It would return, but whatever it did, it shifted All in right. my body. And I was like, whoa, there's something really powerful to this. And it wasn't something crazy like you're sticking your feet in ice cold water where it's just a different pain so your brain can only concentrate on one pain at a time. Well, um, sometimes I do stick my feet in spring water, which is absolutely freezing, and I've gotten really good at it. I huh. can, like, leave them in there for, like, 10 minutes. Do you really? Yeah, oh, I can. Wow. Yeah, other people are like, oh, my gosh, it's so cold. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, it's great. Um, but it, when you put your feet in ice cold water, it also has an effect on your nervous system. It's cooling All the right. blood. It's reducing inflammation. Um, it has some pretty powerful effects. Like they say you should take a cold shower every day because mm -hmm. it's super good for your nervous system. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I love it in the summertime especially. Yeah. It's just one of those cool things. I guess that's, yeah, it's cold. Yeah, huh. it makes the you feel good. In the wintertime, not so much. 
<laughs> tell me from a business standpoint, how does it work? I guess, tell me about the whole, let's start with marketing. Okay. You got to market this to people and say, hey, come for a walk with me in the woods. Yep. And some people are going to be like, mm, why do I need you? Right. Well, exactly. Well, some people, um, adults, for example, I am completely comfortable hiking on my own. But there are women, especially, that are afraid to hike on their own. They're afraid of, you know, bumping into men while they're alone. They're afraid of animals. Sure. Um, someone may have never, they may have never gone. And so, like, they don't know what Wait, plants. never gone hiking? Tw like, it's some crazy, like, 43% of people under the age of 24 have never gone hiking. What? Yeah. Wow. That, oh, yeah. That's it, amazing. Well, and I mean, that's the that's... generation after us, right? But like when we were kids, I mean, I don't know about you, but I was like riding my bike all the time and everywhere. Yeah. Oberk Gardens didn't used to have a fence around it. So I'd ride my bike to Oberk Gardens. Oh, funny. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> I loved it. I did it all the time. I used to ride my bike around the lake when I was like 10 years old. You all do right. not see 10 year olds riding their bike around the lake. No, just when I pulled in the place here, there's a little kid, I don't know, nine, ten years old, just kind of space cadet walking on the sidewalk. And it yeah. dawned on me that you don't see kids walking by themselves, at especially. All. Oh. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, so, but the whole hiking thing, and every I would have never guessed that that statistic was was true. I heard it on the radio, so who knows? But that's what Must they said. And I was like, what? Never been hiking? Yeah, I guess of the few people that I know that would fit that age bracket. But they're stuck on video games. That's what a lot of kids, especially males, All right. under the age of 24, it's like um, there's a couple um, young men that work at a Quick Trip by my house, and mm -hmm. I like to get my coffee there. And I'm always like, what are you going to do on your time off? And I love these guys. They're like becoming my friend. They're like, I'm going to play my game. I'm just going to play my game. That's it? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> aspire for greatness i know well it's game. addictive yeah yeah yeah. i know i know of a couple people that i would consider their lives i don't want to say ruined but i will say limited yeah because they were so i mean one kid he was valedictorian uh he started to go to college he dropped out of college and he's still i think he's working at walmart distribution center yeah so that he can play this game about it, 12 hours a day. It's super addicting and they know what they're doing. I mean, and I think even for our generation with Facebook, I noted it in myself, you know, like I see something beautiful and the first thing I want to do is like grab my phone and be like, I got to post this on Facebook. Oh, Everyone needs to know about know. it, right? Like, and, and Facebook is more for me like a sharing thing, but mm -hmm. I, I also find like sometimes I'm thinking in Facebook terms, you know, and it's... Oh. Because, like it's top of mind. Yeah, Constant, right? Interesting. I mean, that's these devices are designed so we use them right. as much as possible. Feed the addiction. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I try to do, I guess with nature and stuff like that, when I we go hiking uh, Devil's Lake, Parfrey's Glen, yeah. some great, beautiful places, I just leave my phone in the car. That's awesome. Because one of those, like, I don't need to take a picture of everything. I, I feel like I have to. And, and <laughs> I, love taking I don't want to get pinged when I'm out there. <laughs> That's true. I don't want an employee to call me up while I'm hiking yeah. or something like that. Like, yeah, I don't. I I get that because I used to hike when I owned the cleaning business, and it like you just it would ping all the time. Oh my god! It's impossible not yeah. to like. I'm so thankful for that because I won't be getting pinged. Yeah, there's something <laughs> to be said for that. But you were talking about marketing, right? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, <laughs> segue. <laughs> um, no, it's so easy to talk to you, right? You just go forever. Well, so fun. marketing, how, or I guess, what have you done for marketing the business to start so far? So I just, I'm just getting started. I actually came up with the idea just maybe three months ago. And I was oh, nice. posting on, um, um, there's like childcare Facebook groups. Okay. Um, about this service and a news reporter picked it up spectrum one news and um was like this is such a great idea like huh. you should have nature nannies all over the world and she's like you should go on tv with jojo do you know who jojo is i have no idea she's the super nanny she right. comes in she's okay. like she's like um caesar milan for kids 
<laughs> she, she's so great all right and so she really got me going because i was like i gotta if i'm gonna be on the news like i gotta build a website so yeah. the, the last couple months i built my entire website myself nice um and i'm going to school for forest therapy school and so we just covered um the section on marketing so there's a ton of things i can do for marketing that i'll be working on like airbnb experiences mm. is a great one Eventbrite um, is another one where you can put your events on there. Mm -hmm. Meetup, um, Facebook ads. And then I'm gonna be working with a um, spa on the east side of Madison that's really close to um, Oberg Gardens. So nice. parents can get a spa service and I'll take the kids to go over to Ulbrick and oh. depending on how long they're going to enjoy the service, then we might grab lunch because it's in that building where yeah. Ian's Pizza is and oh, very cool. all that stuff. Yeah, so then we can do like some art projects too. I'll bring my art. If it's going to be like a half day experience for right. them, I'll have some tools to keep the kids busy. So Nice. Yeah. So is the idea for this, I guess from a growth standpoint, or maybe it's too soon to tell, Yeah. is the idea that you'll eventually have employees that'll be taking kids and adults on all these hikes or is the idea to just keep it you well for now i just want to keep it me because i think there's some learning that mm. needs to take place in any business when you first get started yeah you know like what to do if this situation happens or and and just having this knowledge of being able to share experiences um because i learn something different every time i take the kids out like last week i was um informed scientifically how babies were made by a 10 year old Oh, well, that's good that he shared that with you. I know. I was, you don't know what you're going to get yeah, with kids, funny. right? Put pen and paper, I should write that down. It was hilarious. I was like cracking up. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think once I gain a little bit more experience, then the idea would be to have so subcontractors. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't be employees, but my website has a capability to add a staff member nice. or an independent contractor, and they can completely be in control of their entire schedule. I can put their profile up that, you know, this is a person who's a nature nanny, and then parents would be able to book with them individually or choose from different nature nannies. Very cool, Yeah. very cool. So that brings to the question, the whole business owners are really good at building their own prison kind of thing. Yeah. So you're, I imagine you're scheduling out with summertime and this is, this is the time to hike, I guess. Yep. How do you have time for yourself <clears throat> as well as time to take kids and adults on all these hikes and stuff like that. So I think that was the greatest lesson I learned in my first business is that I was so flexible and I worked um, so much that mm -hmm. it actually made me really ill. I had like chronic fatigue and it took oh. a long time to heal it because I just was very much overworking and over trying to, you know, um, overextending for the customer and and not having enough balance. Mm -hmm. So uh, the wonderful thing about this business is, is I have my schedule is set on my website and they can only pick from the times Got it. that are there. Yeah. Um, and I do have some flexibility, like if a parent really needs a different time, mm -hmm. then I can easily just put in the new time and block off Got it. a different set of time. All right. So there's really good um, balances in place. So I'm sure. having because I think that's so important that you have it is. a balance of work and, you know, me time or play time. Yeah. Or... Oh, very much so. I can tell you that I, I mean, I own my business or a business since 2006 and I'm still learning. Yeah. Still, even today I was in the office and I stood up and I'm like, you know, like when you sit for five hours or whatever and you yeah. stand up and you're like, your body's telling you. What are you doing? You need to move. Yeah, but yeah. you all, there's just like one more thing. Yeah. One more thing. It's hard like, when you have a service business. Like, yeah. they, it's just you're yeah. constantly getting pinged. I feel like I should have graduated past that. <laughs> it's yeah. hard. Because you, if you care about your business and your customers, you mm -hmm. want to get, and people expect answers so fast these days mm -hmm. um, that it's hard not to answer people's questions. Yeah. Yeah. It is tough. It is so tough. It is. So it's it's one of those things, like even today, I'm like, if I were to take my own advice, I wouldn't have this issue. <laughs> but here we are. 
Hey, but you have a successful business and I'm sure your customers are super appreciative of it. So Yeah, I'd like to think so. But I don't I mean they don't know that I'm sitting in that desk too long. <laughs> yeah, but they be. would know if you weren't getting back to them. Uh probably. This is more <laughs> I think this is mopping up employee stuff. Oh, okay. So I guess there was a little bit of customer stuff, but for the most part, customers are cool. Yeah. And I have um, decent employees that can take care of them. That's good. But you got that rolling employee base of headaches. Yeah, <laughs> always trying to make sure the spot is filled all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's constant. It's constant. It's so interesting because I guess that's why I wanted to ask about employees and stuff like that. Yeah. And I imagine with the cleaning business, this was... Must have been a bigger deal than what I have now, though right now it's a headache. Yeah. Well, employees. I had 40 employees, and then that just became so much to manage that yeah. we ended up hiring subcontractors. All right. And that took a lot of burden off of us because each subcontractor had three of their own employees. So oh. they had to do the recruiting All right. for themselves. And if someone called in sick, they needed to fill the spot with that was their problem. somebody else, right? right? And so that has that taught me a huge lesson because we went from like four people in the office down to two. Oh, wow. Yeah. And right. like two meaning one full time and me popping in, you know, as I could because I wasn't feeling well towards yeah. the end. So it just it really freed us up. And so having had that experience, I know that if I do create um, this to, to have um, additional nature nannies, it will mm -hmm. definitely be on an independent contractor basis. Nice. And they will be in charge of their own schedule. And if, if they don't show up, then they're not going to get, you know, clients to yeah. rebook with them. It's so them. yeah, it's, and there's a different mentality, I think when it's your business. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Yeah. It's interesting how, I guess not to go crazy tangent-wise, but it's interesting, you and I, I consider to be pretty driven people. Yeah. And there's a lot of people, like I originally, when I first started my business, I assumed that everybody was driven for yeah. something. Maybe it's not necessarily business ownership, but something, whatever yeah. it is. And I'm finding a lot of people. It's actually pretty rare, and I went through that same experience when I hired my first employee I just could not wrap my head around like why they couldn't they do it as fast as me yeah. why weren't they as motivated as me and then I realized like that's a I don't know what percentage of the population is that driven but it's not the norm that's so weird to me though I know so like what are you gonna do? but they only know their experience and we only know our experience so they're right. probably looking at us like we're lunatics like oh well, they may be it? right <laughs> i can't blame them why are you working so hard but i guess even if your goal was to to beat mario or whatever yeah <laughs> something some goal or some focus of any kind i don't care what it is like even if you want to have a fancy coffee every day whatever yeah whatever who cares yeah but as long as you're driven to something but i keep meeting people and even when you're interviewing people to hire I try to figure out, like, what is their drive? What is their goal? What's their motivation? Nothing. Really? Nothing. Huh. Even a lot of them, even money is not a motivator. Huh. Which blows my mind. Maybe it's video games. Uh, <laughs> Just kidding. Well, well I, a lot of them do play video games. <laughs> yeah. But it's interesting because I find, like, there's no, or maybe they don't want to share. There's no, like, I'm going to beat this level or something. Right. They're just happy. No. They are content. Yeah. Or complacent. That's <laughs> I guess. pretty normal if you think about it. I mean, there can only be one leader of the company, right? And few people on this planet are actually visionaries, right? Sure. And usually the person who is running the business is a, a bit of a visionary. And so I think that's that balance of you need people who want to lead the people and people mm -hmm. who are totally happy being led. But I, so I think of a movie like The Matrix. Yeah. Or you think of even just any shoot 'em up movie, like a James Bond film or something like that. The bad guys always have this arsenal of people. Yeah. That just do all this crazy stuff, right? We're going to take over the world. So they had to build some crazy satellite or like all the people in The Matrix that were in that little ship. Yeah. Like all of them seem pretty driven. 
And I think, what if it was actually the employees that I'm seeing come through? What if they were in that movie? It'd be like, well, <laughs> the machines are taking over. They won. <laughs> they already won. Maybe you should become a nature nanny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, less interesting. stress. Way less stress. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe. Just kidding. I don't, uh, I don't know. I guess when I go hiking, I don't want to talk. No, I, I hike a lot alone, but hiking with children is pretty funny. They I'm just be cool. Yeah, they just say, I think they feel very much um, safe and like, mm -hmm. and calm. So the conversations that they want to have are really neat. Like they come from in their heart versus that's fair yeah that's fair because they'll open up yeah yeah and we, <laughs> i can't remember well my my kid is what is he eight now and we take his buddies to parfrey's Glen's a good example i love that place that's beautiful it's beautiful right yeah have you been to Dewards Glen right next door have not that is one of my favorite places on the planet better than parfrey's Glen? i like it better whoa i gotta check it out it's so beautiful because Parfrey's Glen is cool because you get a little water. Yeah. And depending upon time of year, you never know how much water. But Duard's Glen has way less people. And oh. I like to hike through the Glen. And right. it's just, it's stunning. I'll have to check it it's out. It's deeper and narrower. Okay. So, yeah, it's really pretty. Any kid I've ever taken there has absolutely loved it. All right. That's the thing with Parfrey's Glen, right? Is you, yeah. at first you try to go rock to rocks, you don't get wet. And then eventually... Your feet get wet, and then you just have fun with it. Yeah. And kids don't even try to go rock to rock. No, they just get like, their feet wet. We're wet right yeah. away. Yeah, I went on. hiking with my friend on Friday, and her kid um, got in the water and got his boots completely wet, like over the oh, boots. Oh, over. <laughs> All right. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and then he's like, my boots are so mushy. I was like, oh, yeah, funny. but yeah. they are. Water will do that. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So when you, well, let's look at schedule. Yeah. In the winter time, do you still go hiking? Yeah. This right. last winter um, was the first winter where I went hiking on a very regular basis, thanks to my friend Katie. Um, we made it a routine to go almost every Friday. Wow. And I felt better this winter than I ever have, like mentally and physically. We need fresh air and mm -hmm. we need sunshine and we need nature like we are nature. Right. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people who suffer from not feeling well in the winter, whether it be like seasonal depression or just low energy or low mood. And I'm telling you, we went hiking on nine below degree days. Wow. And if you have hand warmers and you're dressed properly, mm -hmm. it's great. Like it's beautiful and it's kind of funny because your breath will make your hair all like oh, yeah. frosty and icy. And yeah, <laughs> when I go cool. running in the winter, you get frozen, uh, you'll get frozen eyebrows and yep. if it's really cold, you get frozen eyelashes. Yeah, well and you know because you walk every, or you run every morning. Do you yeah. ever miss a day? I think, um, I think my dog and I have missed three. Ever? Uh, well, I don't know if we missed, we cut them short. Like wow. when it's 25 below, yeah. <laughs> cut it short. That's pretty cold for the dog too. Yeah, yeah. and um, there were some, I think we hit two thunderstorms where there's actually lightning that was like, mm, that's just taking chances we probably shouldn't be taking. When I had the Airbnb, a, a lady stayed at my house who had been struck by lightning. So it is a thing. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I could see it. I could <laughs> see it. I can, Kirby, my dog, she's um, she normally just tools around, chases some rabbits, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But when there's thunder, she's like, Get your butt moving there, buddy. We're not doing it. We're not. Oh, she's like, we're not jogging. We are sprinting. She's ready to go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because she wants to get back home to crawl in the basement because the world's ending. Aw. Yeah. Poor so, baby. But I'm like, we're going for a run, right? Because <laughs> a tired dog is a good dog. <laughs> she's uh, she's your little savior. She making is. sure you're not out in dangerous weather. We yeah. will not be hiking if there are thunderstorms fair, that is fair, dangerous totally and you can get hurt so yeah we would be canceling that appointment right rescheduling what's well, interesting hiking all year round i guess now that you mention it that would probably be cool it's beautiful you get oh and some of my favorite things from hiking this winter is um breaking the ice you know how you just get that tiny film of ice with water underneath mm -hmm, it and you mm -hmm. can smash it all yeah. and you know, kids do that type of stuff all the time. And then 
I was really starting to pay attention. You can find all these cool patterns in the ice when there's that water just yeah. below it, the yep. different ways it freezes and has different designs. And it's just, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's much quieter in the winter though, because you don't have the birds. It's just yeah, totally I think the different. Snow yep. Observe some sound. My buddy and I went biking across um, one of the lakes this winter, and that oh, cool. was one of the coolest feelings I've ever had. Yeah. Because we stopped in the middle of the lake. So you're in the middle of the town, you can see the capital, mm -hmm. campus, and all that jazz. So there's city all around you, but you're in the middle of the frozen lake, so there's not a whole lot of people. Yeah. And we stopped in the middle there, just to take a little break. And it was, it was kind of eerie, but it was still super cool. Mm -hmm. Because it was just so, um, I don't know, it seems like you're surrounded by nature and then that is surrounded by city. That had been really neat. It was cool. It was cool. I'd do that again. I bet. Yeah. And yeah. then looking at the ice, it was kind of freaky at first, but then you're like, well, it's that's... It's kind of beautiful, though. It's neat. It is. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm And when you clear it, if it's like, and it can be like bumpy or yeah. really smooth or... We aimed for the bumpy because we found the smooth stuff was not great for a bike. Oh, were you sliding? Uh, yeah, we had rear end kick out a couple times. Did I you have a fat tire bike? Yeah. Okay. Not studded. Okay. But they were, um, they spread the weight a little bit. Okay. But you could still, the first, I don't know, first 50 feet, that was like, mm, this doesn't seem like that great of an idea. <laughs> but as you get going and you get acclimated to it and you can, you just feel the bike and adapt a little bit. Mm -hmm. I bet you felt great after just to be outside. It was cool. Then we hit Mickey's Diner, so that was all. Nice. <laughs> Can't go wrong there. <laughs> that was my grandma's like favorite spot. I think she has like she used to have like a a coat in a frame or something there. Oh, funny. I don't know if it's still there. That's awesome. I know. That's super cool. That's my neighborhood I grew up in. Nikki on Monroe Street and all that. Oh, Monroe. I was thinking of Mickey's on Williamson. No, it was Mickey's Dairy Bar. Oh, so there must be a second one then. Across from Camp Randall. Okay. Nope, yeah. not that one. Never mind. All right. No worries. <laughs> no worries. Um, what has been some of the feedback that you've gotten from people when you tell them exactly what Nature Nanny is? What is some of the feedback that you get? Good or bad? Yeah, I'm getting, you're doing a good thing. That's a really great idea. You're a genius. Um, Thank you for getting kids out into nature. Nice. Um, really positive feedback. Like people are very supportive of it. They think it's a good idea, mm -hmm. which makes me feel really good because I do want to make a difference. And I feel like um, global warming and the environment is on my mind okay. a lot. Like I'm pretty sensitive to all things nature, just mm -hmm. um, animals and insects and trees and um, habitats and habitat loss and I feel like if children connect with nature at a younger age mm -hmm. and even adults um, there will just be this shift in consciousness that says hey like there are things we can do to make you know our practices more sustainable mm -hmm. so that we're not just taking all of our resources and right. um, you know, hurting our planet, and and they know, like, if you cut down trees, like, with the, I think it was the em emerald ash borer, was that the thing that hit our neighborhood where all the trees? Yeah, yeah, a lot of neighborhoods. And, like, the golf course I heard just down the road lost, like, hundreds of trees. And so they did scientific studies on when that hit, and they were seeing in doctor clinics respiratory illnesses spiked because we lost so many trees. Really? And they have found even um, people who live closer to, um, you know, very um, treed areas mm -hmm. have even better neonatal outcomes. What is that? Um, childbirth and um, wow. the wellness of the newborn babies. How do they even keep track of that? I don't know. There's, I mean, do you live science by trees? is yes. studying <laughs> all kinds of stuff, right? Like, all right. Um, and I think we're pretty lucky because we have a lot of trees in our neighborhood. You know, it's interesting you say that because we, when we bought our house, uh, I don't know, 10, 11 years ago, whatever, um, the old owner gave us a, uh, an aerial shot okay. of the neighborhood. And it shows, I don't know, the neighborhood's probably half full. Okay. Zero trees. Wow. Like zero. It was just farm field that they've 
Oh, I didn't Flynn know Ish that. Put up some houses, yeah. So it's interesting because you look at it oh. now, and there's trees, mature trees everywhere. Thanks for sharing that. I always thought they um, just left some of the trees that were naturally no. there. Like the so trees. So those were all planted by our people that moved in. That's yeah. beautiful. Our lot, we put in. Oh, I want to say we put in 17 trees. Wow, yourself? Yeah amazing yeah because there you was have a lot of shade your uh, house probably feels great yeah well i mean we got there and there's two maybe three something like that like wow it was weird because we were used to like yeah trees mature the neighborhood that we came from was probably 30 years older than this one okay this one was kind of mid 90s mm -hmm. and so it was interesting because we came from a place that had very mature trees yeah like maple trees that are big maple trees aren't just that little mm -hmm. stick so we're like, we need trees everywhere. I know, and I lost, I've lost one, two, three, four, five, six. I think I've lost seven large trees. Have you, really, from storms or just? Um, one fell down in a storm, one was the ash borer, um, two pine trees got some type of disease, all my uh, juniper trees got like the spider oh, wow. disease. Um, so I have planted 10 trees in the last year and a half and I plan on planting a lot more because like I can really understand global warming because when I lost the four trees in the backyard mm -hmm. my house used to be so cool I never needed air conditioning never like it was always cool back there and when I was running the Airbnb there was an arborist that stayed there and he noticed the two trees that were coming down and he said that is going to drastically change the temperature of your house oh and it is so hot in All my right. kitchen and my oh, no. living room now because there's not any great shade back there anymore All right. so that's just um yeah you can change the entire environment of your house just by planting trees yeah then not to mention the air quality mm -hmm. and all the other health benefits that come along with it. Interesting. So good job, James. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, I just wanted more for privacy. Mm -hmm. I guess, you know, now that you're talking, I guess you do feel better when you're out and about in by a lot of trees and stuff like that. My kid plays ball and we'll play ball in the yard. Mm-hmm. And at first he's like, hey, let's play ball. And I'm like, oh, it's 8.30, mm -hmm. man. I'm kind of dialing it down. But I'm like, okay, let's go. That's the only way you're going to get better is to practice. Right. And you almost feel better when you're done than right before you get out there. It's like mowing the lawn, too. Like it feels like such a chore. But usually after you're done, you feel pretty good. And same with gardening. I mean, I yeah. always feel, if I'm starting to have a pain flare, I'll just hit the garden. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. Well, if you feel pain, just come on over to our gardens. <laughs> Pick all the weeds. Yeah, yeah. grab them all. They keep it's you busy. Good. Oh, that's funny. But there's nothing better than, like, uh, this year I grew lettuce. Oh. Oh, it's so good. That's tough to grow, though, isn't it? I just put it in. I mean, this is only my third year gardening, so right. it's like, a, and I don't, I haven't done a ton of research on it, so I just kind of experiment. Yeah. And I just put the seeds in. Not all of them made it, but I right. have like three good, it's leaf lettuce. And then I did mustard greens, and they are spicy. All right. Whew. They're good, though. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. I'm more like a tomato and snap peas because I feel like you can't mess it up. Yeah. The peas that I d did this year, and they're growing. I'm excited. Tomatoes I've always done. I'm great at growing tomatoes. Cucumbers I'm very good at. Mm -hmm. Um, last year I got squash bugs. What are squash bugs? They're, they're, they lay like 800 million thousand eggs and they're impossible to get rid of oh, and they no. eat all your squash. Oh, yeah. boo, all right. I know, no oh. more squash. <laughs> Apparently once they know where you live, they come back. So. Oh, they, the word spreads? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. What have been some of the challenges in starting this business that you didn't necessarily anticipate? Um, or is it too soon to tell, maybe? Yeah, I think. I think it is too soon to tell. I don't feel like, you know, and this is great news because I feel like we were talking about this before the show, like with Card Beanie, my invention, mm -hmm. there's been so many challenges that I'm like, I don't think this is what I'm supposed <laughs> to be doing. I mean, there's oh. just so many things shouldn't be so difficult. Just, you know, really things that should be easy just keep giving me problems. And with Nature Nanny, things are just going you know oh. like um and they're going well and i'm getting good feedback and um 
I think just more doors will open. I think it's going to take a little while to grow it. Sure. Which is just fine. Get awareness, right? Yeah. And I'm not in any big rush, mm -hmm. but it's my dream job. Like getting paid to take a hike doesn't feel like work. It feels like, I don't know, fun. Right? Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound so bad. It's pretty awesome. I like it. I like it. I did four sessions last week and I just felt so good. But I did realize like if I'm going to do it every day, sunscreen is going to be much uh, more necessary because by the last day I was like, my face. It hurts. Oh, no. <laughs> you Speaking of which, you yeah. have a bag that you wanted to show. Yeah. So, yeah, I bring, um, I bring supplies with me. So in case parents forget, I always have bug spray. Um, I have... Um, some good sunscreen, the baby mineral, so it's not so stingy on the eyes. I'm super sensitive to that stuff. I, okay. And then I have a first aid kit oh, in nice. case we get any little owies. Just in case. Mm -hmm. And then I always bring, I ask that the, the participants, either the adults or the teams or the children, bring their own water bottle. All right. Um, but if they don't, I always have bottled water in the car because you've got to have something to drink while you're hiking. Oh, yeah. Stay hydrated. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I do the guided forest therapy walks, it the guided forest therapy walks have a, a traditional schedule that you do where you're picking the invitations, you're opening the senses, you come back to the group and you share, and then you go and do another invitation. But they always close with a tea ceremony. Tea, like drinking tea? Yeah. Okay. So um, on those, I'll be bringing um, a teapot and some tea for people to try. Because oh, that's wow. the last um, sense that you're supposed to use is the taste. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you about the senses and taste specifically. Like, yeah. And I'm learning some foraging, tree. too. Have you ever, like, learned anything about foraging wild food? No. It is something that I've had friends that you feel like if a zombie apocalypse comes, they'd know what bark to eat how to start a fire. I'm learning from my friend. His name is Vincent Aiello and he teaches foraging. So mm -hmm. he's been, and I hope to work with him. I hope to do like sessions where I'm doing the forest therapy with half the group and the other half the group is learning foraging oh, and nice. then we swap for larger groups. But I'm learning tons of different things you can forage. All right. It's really fun. So that's people knowing what berries you can eat, mm -hmm. what leaves mean whatever. and Yep. There's right. a lot of things you can eat, All even right. in your lawn. Like you can eat clover, the stuff that looks like spinach. It's, I think it's called plantain. You can eat that. It grows in your lawn. All right. Right now the raspberries are ready to go. Nice. They're so good. All right. Yeah, raspberries are good. I know. The wild ones, I love them. The gooseberries are green. They'll be turning ripe soon, and then we'll have the wild grape. All right. Um, but there's a ton. I mean, Vincent's like the expert. I remember like this much of everything he tells me. He remembers a scientific name and everything. I'm like, oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Nice. There's this plant called the sticky weed you can eat. Or you can throw it on people and they don't even know it's attached to them. And it's pretty funny. Oh, it's just got little yeah, things I, that stick? I do it with the children all the time. And then we have like sticky weed wars. <laughs> it's really funny. fun. <laughs> have you found different places to hike that are for different things like someone comes to you and they're like hey I'm not feeling so hot or hey mm -hmm. I'm depressed or hey I have a physical ailment or something mm -hmm. like that and you're like oh we have to go to this place because they have a bunch of oak trees or I don't know well that's a good question because um, studies have found that pine trees are the trees that bring you the most peace and calm oh so if like a child was struggling with um, overthinking or terrible anxiety mm -hmm pine trees are the place to go all right they will and there is something about when you step into a pine forest and you feel that cool air mm -hmm. you can feel that there's a shift in yeah. how you're feeling um but it also depends on what people like because some people really like water and some people really like trees and some people don't like closed in trails and then you have different physical abilities so like one of my favorite trails is two pines and lodi on the ice age trail okay but it's it's difficult i mean difficult because it's steep or um close? it's all windy and close and um it's beautiful though i mean it changes scenery from um totally treed in to grasslands to complete forest to like it's just beautiful. All right. I love that one. And then like Elmer and Edna Culver Springs down the road, that's pretty easy. Like you could probably take a, a stroller through there if you had oh. a good one. Okay. Because it's pretty flat and 
easy to get to. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that's super cool. So you've been exploring all kinds of different hikes here. Mm -hmm. Man, I've lived here for a while, and I don't know half the places that you mentioned. Oh, I will give you ideas all the time. There's a great one on River Road uh, towards Wanakee. It's yeah. part of the Cherokee Marsh. Okay. That one's beautiful. There's um, sunfish in the pond. The kids love that. And there's turtles. Oh, wow. And we saw tons of turtle eggs. They're weird. They're not like a shell. They're like more like, feel like skin. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. They're really weird. Um, and there's totally different stuff there too. Pine trees and forest and it's by that um, country day school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. That's beautiful too. Nice. And then, you know, you have Patrick's Marsh. That's really close yep. to here. I've only been there once, but it was pretty cool. Yeah, it's short, but it's, it's really pretty. Those huge oak trees are yeah. amazing. Yeah, it was interesting because we went there and we're just tooling around, and all of a sudden there's a huge dock. Mm -hmm. Beautiful dock, but I'm like, mm -hmm. how long has this been here? It's pretty cool looking. It's beautiful. And all the frogs that sing down there, holy cow, if you go down there when the frogs are active, mm -hmm. it's it's beautiful. Are they swans? They are pelicans. Pelicans, that's what it was. Yes, and it's not normal for them to be going there, but they go there every year. And then... The blue herons, if you ever are driving towards Columbus, when you mm -hmm. get to that section that's by the truck driving school, there's tons of trees. And if you look up high, you'll see their giant nests. Oh, really? Yes. And there's like 50 of them, and they're huge. And those blue herons go from those nests mm -hmm. over to Patrick's Marsh. All right. Mm -hmm. Nice. That so is super beautiful. Cool. They're that is huge super cool. birds. Yeah, they're a cool bird to to watch. Mm -hmm. I can remember a buddy and I were fishing at Devil's Lake and we weren't catching anything and this heron comes by, stands in the water maybe Whoa. 20 feet from us, stabs their beak down, catches a fish and takes off. So they stab it? They stab They it. don't like, oh wow. It stabbed it, it was still on its beak and it happened so fast. Cool. I'm like, that bird just mocked us. We've been out here for two hours, haven't caught a thing. This thing's like, bloop, let me show you how it's done. But wasn't that more exciting than catching a fish? Oh, my God. A thousand yeah. times. A thousand times. Yeah, I don't even. It is so cool when the animals interact with you in nature. Like, yeah. I've just, it's, that's one of my favorite things. Yeah. It's one of those, like, what just happened? Yeah. I feel like we're not on top of the food chain. <laughs> mm -hmm. When something like that happens. Totally. We were, uh, this was the conversation I was having hiking with the kids the other day. I, like, um, humans think they're the superior race, but it's like, we can't turn to liquid and then be a caterpillar and turn into a butterfly. Did right. you know they completely liquefy themselves? I did not. Okay. Yeah, they turn to liquid. Oh. I'm like, we can't be born and get up and walk within seconds. Mm -hmm. I'm like, we can't fly. Mm -hmm. We can't fly all the way to South America without a compass or something, you right. know, like... Yeah, it reminds you that there's intelligence, all different kinds of intelligence. Right, right. beyond our abilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. How can people find you in Nature Nanny? Um, they can go to my website. It's www.naturenanny.com. Easy enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Super easy to remember. Yeah. I appreciate you being on the show. Thank you for having me. It was really this fun. This cool. And congrats. Went by so fast. New... Yeah, right? Time goes really fast. It does. And congrats on the new gig. Thank you. I'm really excited. It's literally my dream job. Nice. I'm excited to see where this is at in um, even a year or two. It would be interesting to see how you grow this and where, like you're expanding beyond to doing nature hikes in Hawaii or something. <laughs> I would love to do retreats. Be that would be super cool. Super fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it. Looking forward as you grow, right? <laughs> yeah. Cool, cool. This has been Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggle stories and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. We are underwritten locally by the Bank of Sun Prairie. If you're listening or watching this on the web, if you could do us a huge favor, give us a big old thumbs up, subscribe, and of course comment and let Kayla know what is awesome. If there's any hikes that you want to check out or would like to check out, recommendations, right? Well, maybe you know all of them. Who knows? No, I'm <laughs> open to suggestions. They're everywhere. There's a lot. My name is James Cademan, and Authentic Business Adventures is brought to you by Calls on Call, offering call answering and reception of services for service businesses across the country on the web at callsoncall.com. As well as Draw in Customers Business Coaching, offering business coaching services for entrepreneurs looking for growth on the web at drawincustomers.com. And of course, the Bold Business Book, a book for the entrepreneur and all of us, available wherever fine books are sold. 
We'd like to thank you, our wonderful listeners, as well as our guest, Kayla Storlid, the owner of Nature Nanny. Can you tell us that website one more time? www.naturenanny.com. Awesome. Naturenanny.com. Easy enough. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. It was really fun. Yeah. Past episodes can be found morning, noon, and night. The podcast link found at drawincustomers.com. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next week. I want you to stay awesome. And if you do nothing else, enjoy your business.